Hello, I, uh, this uh, example um, is showing how to use PROC NL mix to fit a logistic normal model with binary data. So you can view this as a generalization of linear mix model and now we are getting to uh, the nonlinear mix effects model okay, which are very useful in some of the fields like uh, uh, PKPD. Okay. And uh, here's the data set. We have uh, a data set we call infection, and we get uh, uh, four variables, clinic, T, X, N. Uh, let's explain what uh, this variable means. So the data is from a multi-center trial investigating the effectiveness of two topical cream treatment in curing an infection. There are eight clinics, number of trials, and favorable results are recorded. So you have clinics, that's the variable for clinic. Uh, T is the treatment, X is the number of favorable results, and N is the number of trials. Okay, so now let's read in that data set. So the outcome, uh, you know, we, uh, is uh, we have for each uh, um, clinic, we have number of um, favorable results out of a certain number of trials. So s this is set up for a binomial distribution, but we know um, the clinics have a heterogeneity. Okay, so uh, for example here we have 1, 1, and 2, 2, and 3, 3, so you have this result next within clinic, so there's clustering we need to take care of. Um, so what we want to do is we want to uh, fit a logistic model with uh, random effects. Okay, so here you have the NIJ to be the number of trials at ICE clinic and at JACE treatment, and XIJ is the number of favorable results at ICE clinic for the JACE treatment. And what we, what we want to do is we assume uh, the conditional distribution of XIJ given a random effects UI, so that kind of the latent variable creating the clustering at each clinic. So this conditional distribution will follow a binomial distribution with the total number of trials, NIJ, and the probability of success, PIJ. Okay, and since we are fitting a logistic regression model, so we do the logic transform fashion of the PIJ, so it's a log of PIJ over 1 minus PIJ, and we cause 8IJ. And after the transformation, we assume uh, this transformed uh, parameter will can, uh, re be related to um, the treatment through this linear combination of the treatment plus a random effect for the center, uh, for the clinic effect. Okay. So here T uh, underscore J is a J's treatment, U underscore I is a random effect for clinic, and UI we assume uh, follows a normal distribution um, with mean zero and uh, uh, sigma U squared. So this is a, a standard assumption for the random effects. So then uh, here's the uh, model equation. So how do we implement that? Uh, it is a, a nonlinear relationship and with random effects. We know PROC mix only if it's a linear uh, relationship, linear models with random effects. So we need to recode uh, doing using programming um, capability of PROC NL mix to really implement this model. So here we call PROC nonlinear mix NL mix data into infection. And first line we need to define the parameters and we need to give them some initial values. Okay, the initial values um, you can take your best guess based on previous data or anything you think reasonable. Um, of course, um, the better the initial value you select, which is as closer to the true solution, then the quicker you'll get the convergence. Okay. 
Um, so here in this case, we choose beta 0 equal to negative 1, beta 1 is 1, and uh, the um, s2u equal to uh, 2. Okay, so that's the uh, random, uh, the variance of the random effects. So now we define these parameters. We define another uh, parameter called add eta. So this is for this equation. So eta equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times t. That's the treatment. And plus u, that is the uh, random effects. Okay. And after that, we say we exponentiate um, eta and uh, we s define the um, probability of success as exponentiate eta over 1 plus exponentiate. That's the logistic function. After that, we say model. So here is different from proc mix. It's not x equal to. It's we model, we assume x follow a binomial distribution uh, with uh, number of trials n and uh, probability of success p. Okay. And then we need to use a random statement to tell us the random effects is called a u. Uh, and it's going to follow a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance s to u. And we need to tell us uh, how to loop through the uh, repeated measures uh, or multiple measures from the same clinic. We say subject equal to clinic in the random statement. Okay. And then uh, we say we want to predict eta, you know, this uh, outcome here. And we put the predicted value into a data set called eta. And PROC NL mix allows us to actually uh, have the flexibility to estimate any function of parameter. You just need to give the uh, formula for that uh, function of the parameter. For example, uh, if uh, we're really interested in 1 over beta 1, then we can just say estimate that we label it 1 over beta 1 so we remember what we're estimating. And then you just type the formula 1 over beta 1. So this statement will actually give you the estimate you know, for 1 over beta 1 in addition to the standard output from this procedure. Okay, So let's uh, take a look. Uh, so in this case, um, we're pretty lucky. It converts very quick. Uh, so it tells you the data set name or the usuals, the dependent variable x, and the distribution is binomial, random effects u, distribution random effects normal, subject variable is clinic, and tells you the optimization technique is the do quasi Newton method. And integration method is adaptive Gaussian quadrature. Okay. And it tells you about the dimensions in the data set and duration. Uh, uh, tells you the, the initial value of the parameters. And then the iteration history uh, converging in seven steps. Okay. So this is an important uh, message we must get before we interpret the model. It does achieve the convergence. Uh, give us uh, the fit statistics. And then the parameter estimate for the betas and their standard errors and uh, you know t values and uh, uh, the p values and tell you the alpha level. So actually, you can specify the alpha level. The default is 0.05, uh, as Ari Fisher told us to do. Um, but you can specify it to be 0.01 or some other values you want. And the nice thing about this uh, procedure, it also gives you um, the confidence interval, OK, 95% in this case. And this is what the estimate statement did. Uh, additional estimates, you get 1 over beta 1, so get an estimate, a standard error, and uh, p-value, and then the confidence interval, OK? So this is a pretty nice um, procedure, and the key is really uh, this part, okay, how do you specify the model 
and you really need to use programming language to um, write down the um, equation before you implement it. Okay, thank you.